Hey friends, welcome to Origami Review Season 2. And not just Origami Review, but also in a way, an Origami by Boy Season 2. And that's because you might have heard from some of my past live streams that I was moving around a bit. Uh, now we are moved and I have a brand new setup with higher quality gear. And I'm excited to bring higher quality videos and tutorials to you guys. So yeah, let's get into it. Now this origami review episode is very special and I've actually wanted to do it for quite a while now and that is the origami death battle review. Now what is the death battle? It is an online competition that was hosted by origami dan discord and this is the most unique kind of origami competition I've seen um, online because it was in the form factor of one-on-one -on -one battles. And what I really liked about this is it pushed the participants to really design things that may or may not be in their comfort zone. And as a result of that, there are some incredible, incredible designs. We're not gonna be able to go over all of them, but I recommend you that after this video, check out the Discord and check out all the submissions that all the participants made. It's very, very cool. All right, so here we have the Death Battle channel in the Origami Dan Discord, and this is where all the submissions are posted. And what you can kind of see here is that each battle had a specific theme where each person had to design something according to the theme, and then there would be a voting to see which one fit better or was more successful. And there are a lot because there's a lot of participants at the beginning, so we can't go over everything, but I'll try to at least skim through some of the competition so you can see how it went. So for example, the first submission here is by Plant Psychologist, um, Tilted Grid, Boar, very strong entry. Um, and what I want you to notice about Plant's designs as well as some other designers is, you know, right now this is amazingly complex, but you'll see how the complexity and the ideas and the creative creativity grows as the competition goes on. Um, so yeah, we have some awesome stuff here, some beetles uh, by Trees, and then here's the first one I would like to highlight, and this is folded by Drew, and you guys might know him as Fish, and this is for the theme of Underground, and this burrow spider is just such a creative take on just the word underground, you know, it's a very broad term, uh, but to do kind of it's not really like a two in one it's almost like a half <laughs> of a model um and kind of interpreting it as this is just so amazing um the first time i saw the submission i was like man that was such a great execution of this theme and as you can tell yeah this is a burrow spider the model consists of the actual burrow and then the rest of the spider crawling out of the burrow and the photography, you know, digging a hole to actually make the burrow spider, you know, there. It's like, it, it, it's so big brain and I absolutely love it. Uh, you know, I this is like a practical stunt slash design. It, it's, it's really, really cool. I love the different angles that is shown at. Obviously, he shows the full model outside of the dirt to, you know, show that it's one piece of paper. But yeah, man, this execution is spot on very very cool and i want you guys to also pay attention to drew's designs coming forward and right afterwards we can see some of the other themes such as heat and fire this is by squeaky Khan, and i thought this was just really really creative uh, again the interpretation of some of these themes are just really spot on such a cool design you know not super complex but really you know it's it's like a, a conceptual thing, you know, the bottle, it's, it's, it's very spicy or it's like a Molotov. So either way, it's, it's just super cool. Um, another one I want to feature is by non-Euclidean. This is quite cool because it's Euclid of Alexandria and the topic was geometry. Um, so if I were to have the geometry theme, I would probably make some kind of pattern geometric, but non-Euclidean took the concept, applied it to the person who like, you know, pursued geometry and then also had a geometrical part in the design as well, which is this right here. And I'm not a huge mathematician, 
But if you guys have heard of, you know, Euclidean mathematics, uh, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, this is kind of an homage to that. So very, very cool, highly detailed. The face is really great. I love that there's a lot of texture for the hair, which makes it, you know, even though the face isn't, you know, trying to be photorealistic, the different textures clearly define the separation between hair and then the face and then hair once again for the beard. Uh, very excellent model, great use of color change. It's mind blowing with this stuff right here. And then just all the details, you know, got fingers and toes. So super well done, non Euclidean. This was a crazy, crazy design. Really like it. All right. And yeah, I wish I could just talk for, you know, hours on every single one of these submissions. Um, so the ones I kind of glance over, I really recommend you guys check it out. There's some really cool stuff. Um, but we're going to keep going and then get to this, which is Carrots Chimera, where the theme was insect. So again, not the traditional approach to the theme. Um, it's still very much insect, but it's also playing to kind of one of Carrots' strong suits, which is humanoid models and especially female models. Uh, and so this right here, this Chimera, it's basically a spider woman. Um, it's it's so cool you know there's some concept art to these but this is obviously like more of a mythological creature slash you know a, a creation of the mind and it's so well done you can clearly see that there's a spider on the bottom and then a person on top and you know you got fangs i love the angle of the feet you know it looks like it's crawling forward you have the abdomen and the backwards you have good proportions nice curves and the overall success of this model is so so good i really really enjoyed this one and once again a really creative take on the theme all right and next up is we have the competitor for the theme underground and this design is by naoki and you guys are going to kind of see that when we pair this design with say the burrow spider some of these battles were like super heated you know it's it's so crazy which one to pick because they're so well executed. And I really, really love that about this kind of battle format. Um, so this is a Terracotta Warrior from China. And it's a box pleat design. And you can see that the layers um, from box pleat are used so well to kind of complement this Terracotta Warrior, make it look like a statue, make the textures look like stone. Um, you know, I, I think these were like hand carved you know, oh, I don't know how they're made. Um, but with this model, you can see it through the use of the pleats, the, I guess the scaled armor, super cool. There's kind of a little bit of asymmetry to show the robe crossing over different parts of the armor and clothing, as well as just superb detail while not doing too much. And what I mean by that is you know, you don't want the terracotta. It's it's aiming to be a statue. So Naoki was really channeling that kind of emotion to make it look like a statue. So even though it has things like fingers, um, the say other parts of it, like the shoulder pads and then the face are very statuesque and there's not like an, it's, it's very clean as well. There's not like a bunch of wrinkles or crumples, um, which is, which would generally be used if you're trying to make uh, something like the Euclid uh, of Alexandria, like non-Euclidean did, it's kind of the opposite where he's using the smoothness and cleanliness in this design to give it a statuesque feel. And I think this Terracotta Warrior is super, super successful because of that. And as well as because it's super, super cool. Uh, so yeah, I really liked this submission as well. Very awesome. And before we go on, I love that Naoki added this little thing right here, probably my best box plating model so far. And that kind of confidence with this design kind of put in place with the competition is kind of one of the reasons why I really like this competition. I, I knew from the start, you know, that this um, would kind of push people to make really cool stuff. And already in the first round, Naoki's dropping some heat, the best box plating um, they've done. It's, it's, it's really great. Um, and as we continue, you can see now this design is by Bodo. I know the uh, name tag right now doesn't say Bodo, but you're going to see a lot of Bodo models. I really like this one, but sadly, we're going to skip past it. But man, Med Medusa, that's so cool. The mythology makes a lot of sense. 
All right. And next up is a two-in-one model. Uh, and this one is, is much more of a two-in-one model at the same time that it's just one model. So this is for the theme Fire and Heat. And this is by, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. I apologize. Uh, Giorgio Lier. And this is a fire-breathing dragon. And what I really like about this is the amount of fire breath that's coming out of the dragon. You know, the dragon is actually a much smaller part of the design. It's it's way smaller than the fire, um, which makes it really cool because, you know, if you see in, I don't know, anime or action movies, when dragons breathe fire and it's like super huge, you know, and maybe it, it blows a whole city away, and, and you know, it's kind of epic, you know, the CGI or the art style or whatever. And this design really captures that for me. You know, you can see that, um, I think my favorite photo is this first one. It's like hitting the ground and then it's splaying out. Uh, so you can really get that sense of like fire and heat. So yeah, this design, it's super cool. Very, very creative. You know, I wish it was a colored paper because that'd be super dope. But yeah, I really like this design. I think this perfectly fits that theme of fire and heat. When I look at it, that's what I feel. Um, and yeah, great use of design in origami. We're using all these different structures to show the fire shooting out. Um, very well done. Very, very well done. And as we're scrolling past, uh, I'll show my submission for round one. And you probably saw this already, but this is the two-headed dragon. I'm very proud of this design as well. This is something that I had always wanted to do ever since I designed the dragon head, uh, which you might have seen for the crease pattern class. Uh, but I modified it to a double-jawed head, and then I put it on a dragon. Um, so yeah, I was super happy about this. This was one thing where it kind of, the competition kind of forced me to actually fold it. Um, and, you know, uh, it turned out really great, but I was very happy that I actually did it. <laughs> I have a ton of ideas, but oftentimes I complain I don't have enough time. Um, but here, I had the time, I had the energy, and you can find a crease pattern on my website, but no tutorial. No tutorial is going to be made for this one. It is, it is too much. It is too much for a tutorial. Um, but yeah, let's keep going. All right, and here is another round one battle with the theme insect. If you remember, this is an assassin bug designed by award-winning Smile. And if you remember, this is the submission against the chimera that Carrot made. So you can actually see this is a much more traditional take on insect because it's an actual insect. It's a, it's a real life insect and it is executed very well. Um, yeah, just take a look. Uh, they even posted a picture of the real assassin bug. Um, super, super cool. Super, super cool. All right, this next one is designed by Forger. And if you're familiar with Paper Forger's designs, they are pretty crazy and super detailed. This is no exception. Uh, this is Shui from NGNL. Um, I think you can, if you read the manga or if you saw the movie, uh, you'd be familiar with this character. Um, and this was for the theme of waifus, and this is against Carrot, and this was quite a hyped battle piece. Both of them, as you remember, Carrot's last submission was uh, the Chimera. Both of them are kind of very good at creating, I guess, waifus, and so this is definitely a, a nice match head-to-head. -head. And Forger came out very, very strong with this Shui. There's a ton of details, um, very well executed. It's, it's kind of crazy. He even has a reference photo, which we probably can't show, even though Shui is kind of like a robot, I guess. Um, but YouTube might not know. But yeah, very, very cool design. Uh, very well done, Forger. All right. And as you can tell from the last one, we are actually in the second round. And some of these designs are stepping up. So here we have a very hard hitter by Chris. And this is an ancient dragon skeleton. That's right, ancient dragon skeleton. The ancient dragon is already in of itself a complex design. And, you know, at one point it was like super complex. It was, you know, so crazy, crazy. And, and this is the skeleton of it. So super creative by Chris and it was for the skeleton theme. So definitely a very excellent choice. Drop the crease pattern here. As you can tell, very, very crazy. And continuing forward, we have the next one we're going to take a look at. And this was another hype battle. Um, it was Bodo versus Plant Psychologist. Uh, pretty, pretty crazy lineup. Pretty crazy matchup for a one-on-one -on -one here. 
And this is theme was dark, and Bodo chose the Dark Knight, which is such a great. I just love that he went for um, that interpretation of the theme. Dark Knight definitely dark, and not only did he just do a Batman, he did it on the uh, the Bat Cycle. Uh, I think that's what it's called. But um, man, is this thing cool? So he's got Batman, got some face textures, got the detail in the cape, got you know the tire treads. Um, this is no simple design. Uh, I think, you know, the, the partials here are crazy. You know, got the controls. It's pretty insane. Got guns. Like, this is a type of origami that isn't quite fully explored. You know, vehicles are... There's there's some, but not a lot of, a lot of them are hyper-detailed as this one. But not only is this a vehicle, it's a vehicle with a person on top. So, in and of itself, it's kind of like a two-in-one. Uh, it's super crazy. Again, here, here's the crease pattern. Which you can see it pretty ridiculous um but not overly crazy which is the nice thing you know it's not some insane like high count grid and you get this incredible super complex design and one of my favorite designs from the whole death battle is actually plant submission which is the grim reaper which again for dark completely fits the theme very well now this grim reaper is not just the grim reaper you know I, I i love that both plant and bodo were not satisfied with just like a single subject both of them added either a second entire subject or a lot of details to it which in this case plant did he has the grim reaper holding the scythe that has a skull you know there's like a crow on the shoulder and he's also holding a lantern with a candle and he's got a dagger at his side crazy detail in the face um, and insane use of color change uh, you know I, I don't know if you can quite see here but you know the white and the black is very stark difference so great job on the paper um, making the the white and black come out is not easy especially to fold a complex model like this where layers can't be too thick you know you got the color change for the candle color change for the blades for the skull for the the crow or the bird um, yeah, absolutely crazy, crazy design. And something to remind you guys is we only had, you know, the set month basically or a set amount of weeks to design these and to fold them. So it's kind of like it's pretty intense, you know. Uh, people have school and whatnot, and this is all during that time. Yet still, both Bodo and Plant absolutely killed it with this battle going head to head. Um, I believe it was a very, very close battle, and, and both of them were super, super great. Uh, you can tell there's a lot of thought out design in both of them if you observe the crease patterns which i definitely recommend you guys check it out um, when you have time next one i want to bring up is from jake s uh, who designed a scooter gear i folded um, or dirge of dreams or as his name is right now it's northern dreams uh, but this is a rose and the topic was asymmetry um, now you've seen origami roses everywhere it's super common you don't always see them with the full stem and thorns and leaves as well as a color changed rose so you know this one's very special and you know even though it looks similar to the other roses where it's separate you know it's kind of like a modular or just a paper craft um, it's all in one and this is achieved through jake's gigantic brain and <laughs> using asymmetry and he mapped it all out to this which this is, you know, parts of it, pretty simple. But honestly, when I design, I don't use like Pythags much, um, but something about this, the spacing is efficient enough to get all the details in without it being too crazy, but still gets a full rose on top of a stem, thorn, and leaves. So yeah, this very crazy, you know, excellent design work in here. Uh, Jake, your, your brain is huge and the result is very well executed. And continuing forward, uh, we have another submission by Squeaky Khan against uh, Trees for Animals. And this is a frog. And y'all know from these origami reviews, if there's a cute design, I really like it. And even though this is for a competition, I really like that he designed something cute. Um, for me, that has a great effect. Like, look at those eyes. It's super adorable, you know. Origami, it doesn't always have to be complex. If you can still channel emotion... You know from something like cuteness that's still something to look forward and yeah this this it's so cute it's so adorable um but yeah let's keep scrolling down we have another entry by drew 
our fish and this is Darth Vader and you know the lightsaber obviously has some lighting helping it out here but it actually is color changed so we have black paper on one side and then red color changed just for the saber and man this is a crazy Darth Vader to do the lightsaber color change itself is you know quite a thing to get it clean looking without the layers messing up much but then you have the full Darth Vader mask, the body set, you know, a lot of people have looked at Darth Vader. So to get it to, you know, look like him, well, takes a lot of effort. And the design that went into this is amazing. You used, you know, shifters, a lot of structural things to get the, I don't know what this is, a respirator on Darth Vader. Um, so it's not like mush shaping at all. It's very clean. It looks like the armor plate. The proportions are really nice, and I love that there's some asymmetry to the flow of the cloak, uh, and that just you know accentuates the the nice long lightsaber. Um, everything here, it, it's put together very well. This is such a great executed design, super unique, and we can see here only a 52 grid, which is splendid. You know, you can see the design work that Fish put in. Um, like I said, a lot of this is structural in the middle. And you have the asymmetry here to fit in the rest of the details. Very, very awesome design. And going forward, I really like this design. This is by VS for the theme of horror and Siren Head. I mean, it's Siren Head. It's super dope. Love the different pleats that were used to achieve some of the, I guess, mechanical yet, you know, monstrous effects that Siren Head would be. Um, you know, it looks really creepy. <laughs> it, and that satisfies the horror category for me really enjoy it you know it's not over the top and it, it looks exactly like a siren head would say if you were to picture it in a video game or some kind of picture or something like that but yeah you know gotta stay out of the way of this one um, but very neat and we move on from round two and we're in round three uh, as you can see here we both we have the two and ones posted right after each other we can see uh, Jake, he's got a two-in-one deer, which is absolutely spectacular. I like how this was, you know, how this was done. He thought of, you know, how can I connect these two? Really, really nice. And then Chris stepped up a whole bunch. And I know you guys might say I'm biased. I, I like samurai. Uh, but we got a samurai versus a ninja. A two-in-one swordsman or sword person style kind of thing. Um, yeah, Chris, you really elevated your design game here. You went from the ancient dragon skeleton, which is already really good, and then, you know, turned it around. You did a color change, you did a humanoid, and you did a two-in-one all, all at the same time. And so, uh, like, dude, major props for stepping up and creating such a crazy design. You know, trying a lot of new stuff. Used a lot of different pleats here um, instead of the skeleton, which was mainly just, you know, flaps and whatnot. This, you had to do a lot of shaping. Uh, especially to get the feel that they're battling um, and that's really cool I like the way you use the color change you know you have elements of you know red and black on the ninja and then red on the samurai and it just goes well together and also very creative for having the swords clashing as the connection point that's super cool I really like that um, excellent design and keep scrolling and you'll find even more crazy designs here we have Kevin the folder um, their theme is skeleton you know skeletons they're quite a, a hot thing right now, I think, in origami because they're absolutely insane to design. And here we have another dragon skeleton. This one's a little bit different. Um, you know, Kevin put this more into his style, his theme. And man, there are a lot of bones. And yeah, if you if you look at the crease patterns that Kevin produces, they are wild. And Kevin, that made like major props for folding these. This is no simple task. That's a that's a that's that's a crazy crazy crease pattern and model to fold very nicely done i love that there's teeth you know you got like the bat wing skeletons for the wings that takes up a lot of paper you still fit in toes you still fit in ribs very 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 nice all right and uh, as you can tell the participant list is starting to thin out so we see another forger design and this one is my favorite forger design of the competition and this is the dragon hunter and you know again might be a little biased i like those dragon knights um, but this one is so crazy, you know, for to just drop in this bomb design, definitely a Hall of Famer. So much detail, like 
I'm glad he provided, you know, multiple photos of the different angles so we can fully capture some of the details. Let's just start with the right arm, right? You can see pleats, um, claws, you know, more pleats, scales, wings. There's d detail on the, like, calf armor. There's the detail on the chest. There's a lot of detail in the head. You know, let's take a look at this other angle. We can see it's not just, like, a single long flap for the sword. There's different textures, different patterns, um, and then a completely different type of armor on the other side. Still fits in the face. The helmet is not mushed. Uh, oh my goodness, like, this is really crazy. There's two wings. You know, it's there's so much going on. Tons of detail, crazy, crazy design. And the pose is what really sells it for me. It's it's like, you know, it's, it's really haunting a dragon. You know, it's more in like a defensive pose, but it's not a static pose. It's a very dynamic pose. There's a lot of weight shifting onto this back leg as the dragon hunter is like, you know, dodging an attack or preparing um, to counter an attack. Um, yeah, just super, super cool. Really well done. You know, the dragon helmet even has teeth. You know, what more can you ask? It's it's crazy. So super well done, Forgery. This is definitely my favorite of the competition. I think, uh, you know, when he posted it, I was like freaking out <laughs> in the design contest help and talk yeah this one this one's super great and we are back on another design by drew um again you know drew really is leveling up each each step of each round of the competition with another you know well executed design and i think his skeleton here which is the velociraptor skeleton is the best executed skeleton of the uh competition because of how clean it is and also like the overall execution so what i kind of mean by that is it does two things it gets the bone skeleton kind of feel with all the crazy thin flaps and whatnot it creates the effect that hey this was once a velociraptor i can kind of imagine the body around it it's a very i guess realistic looking or feeling skeleton you know there's a ton of details and then the cleanliness. Um, I think a lot of times when you have extremely tight packing with these thin flaps coming out from the interior of the paper, you have a greater chance of having a lot of like paper creep or the flaps, you know, you can kind of see them. But in here, you can see that the way Drew shaped it and effectively used a great paper hid a lot of those layers, especially for the ribs, which are really tough. So you don't see many layers just like blatantly sticking out or getting mushed or you can't, you know, fully just see them all glued together. We only see a bunch of these lines. They're nice and smooth here, um, which really adds to the effect of a bone because the bone doesn't have, you know, striations through the side or hopefully it doesn't. Um, you know, they're, they're smooth, they're clean. And this really takes that, the skeleton win for me, I think, in the death battle. Um, very well done, Fish. Also, once again, insane packing here. This is really well designed. Um, get a lot of details in, a lot of spikes, in a nice, efficient manner. And we're getting into the semifinals, I believe, of the competition. Or maybe this is the... Yeah, I think this is the semifinals. Um, once again, we have Chris. And again, Chris, I'm just highlighting you again for, again, stepping up, you know, and pushing your design um skills and ideas and whatnot so it's another two in one let me see what the theme the theme was just non-human animals um it could have been a single animal but here he took what he learned from the two in one in the previous round and applied it again but in a more complex way so we have a phoenix which normally you know like the satoshi Kamiya phoenix is quite complex and then there's the mini ryujin which is also fairly complex and has scales Chris just merged the two into one model very nicely using color change. This time, especially with this angle to photo, the connection is way more smooth. You know, you can barely even tell where they're connected. You might think that, oh, it's two different models like taped together, just placed next to each other. Uh, but lo and behold, you can see the connection here. So I really love that use of, you know, it's almost like an optical illusion. Um, really effective to get this two-in-one done. Also, a very cool pose here. And scales, you know, adding scales to anything. Um, you know, it's very, it's been done a lot, but it adds a layer of complexity. 
as well as a lot of time that you had to put in um, to fold it. So really well done here. And we can scroll to the next one that we're highlighting. And this is another Bodo model. Um, and this is his alien. And this alien is so great. And I love it because it's not like a flattened stick alien. It is a super like buff, like look at those thighs, look at the ribs. It's a buff alien. And if you've seen the alien movies or if you're a fan of them, you know these guys are real tough. And this one looks tough. Um, you know, it's it's got that nice Bodo styling to it. The folding is clean. The ribs are clean. Like, look at these curves. Um, you don't see, like, mushed things together. It's, it's smoothed out. And that detail really highlights the execution of this model. Uh, fit in all the details. You know, the, it's got the teeth. It's got the sp spines in the back. I'm not sure what those are. There's spikes on the tail. Got the super long claws. And it's, you know, kind of in a dynamic pose. So Bodo really nailed it with this one. I like the paper color he used and obviously great photography as always. Um, really, really effective alien. Um, there's, you know, there's a couple cool ones out there and this one is just, it stands out. So I really, really like it. All right. And we are in the final round and this battle between Chris and Bodo is, I believe, for third and fourth. And I really like the theme they picked. Um, and the reason why is the theme was weapons, but there was a design constraint, which was a 32 grid. And so that design constraint makes the challenge even more interesting because not as only is there like a design concept to play around with, there's also like a design like limitation um, or they have to get even more creative using a much smaller grid to still try to push out something complex. And both Chris and Bodo did that with their models. Uh, both, well, you'll see Bodo's, they have amazing color change. We'll start off with Chris's. This is a, a Reaper girl. You know, tons of color change. You just see, you look at it, and every like other, you know, centimeter you look at, it, something's color change. The, the boots, the outfit, the scythe, but then the blade is color change. The arms are, are non-colored, and then the cloak is colored. It's... It's super crazy, super well done. It's hard to believe that this is only a 32 grid. Um, so really great job and great effectiveness of using what you had with just that limited grid and still pushing out, you know, a ton of detail, a ton of color change. Um, it's super well done. Um, I like the comment here by uh, Morisue San. Is the Chuya Miyamoto RTX on? That That's a funny joke. Um, but yeah. And here we have Bodo's submission, which is a sniper girl. So I like that they chose female subjects um, for, you know, who knows what reason. But I, I feel like because uh, they're trying to convey, uh, you know, a hairstyle that matches a female in some way, uh, there's a little bit of added complexity, um, which is great because it adds more to their 32 grid limit um, that normally they could just avoid with you know a simple color change but instead we have some long hair color changed face we have a tie and Bodo did a great job with some of these proportions and making the model again not flat it's it's curved it's 3d um, you can see in the arms there's curvature there's an elbow joint there's a wrist joint um, and then the gun is really really cool the girl's holding the gun and like you know, two different ways. It's just, it's so crazy that it's 32 grid. Um, all these beautiful uh, color changes. I like that both of them chose the black on white paper to use, which again, demonstrates their skill in creating a paper that can do so um, with the, again, still using a box plate technique. And you can see how Bodo made this very thin as well. So there's a lot of design decisions into putting these together to still get an excellent result you know you don't want it to look sloppy um, with all its complexities or too thick in some areas where you're not able to shape things so super well done um, this battle was super super cool and for the battle for one and two um, we have forger versus drew and both of their designs happen to be from the same movie even though their topic was movie um, i don't think it was quite planned but they're both from lord of the rings which i love the lord of the rings trilogy um read the books when i was young very much enjoyed the movies 
um, and both of their interpretations were highly complex and yeah i i could just say it's, it's insane man so uh here's paper forger's sauron um and say this is back from the scene where he's fighting you know the flashback so he's got the mace um you know this is when he stalls the one ring in an action stance uh, i wish there were some of the other photos so we can see like the side angles but um the whole demeanor of this sauron is you know i would describe as quite terrifying you know he's a threat uh if i were to be standing in his way i'm like something's coming towards me to attack me um sauron as a character has that kind of feeling in the story um you know everyone's kind of wary of mordor to like oh it's sauron even when they're trying to fight him it's like crazy powerful as this ring of power uh and that kind of effect is really channeled through this design um and i really like that about paper forge's design uh, you know, I don't think this photo does it justice on exactly all the amount of details in the armor. Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of hard to tell with the grayscale, but you can make out all these different spines. You can make out the structure of his helmet, the eye slots, um, the different grooves in the mace, and then the rest of the armor and how he's like trotting forward to just smack someone. <laughs> very, very cool and very well done. And we'll go ahead and check out Drew's design, which was Gandalf. So <laughs> it's kind of funny because it's like Sauron. And then on the other side, we have Gandalf. I, I think this would be the Gandalf the White. Um, Lord of the Rings movie, you know, one's the evil character. One is the protagonist. Um, and here we have very, very neat design decision where Drew was trying to incorporate hair, a face, as well as asymmetric structure for Gandalf's staff. And then transitioning it into like a smooth robe. Um, so, you know, one of the things I really like about this model is actually the bottom half where you can still see like defined knees, you know. Gandalf's wearing this robe, but you can tell where his legs are, which is a great, you know, just a little extra bit that puts this piece together. It's got a nice robe that's open, an outstretched arm. Um, compared to... Uh, Forger's design of Sauron where it's very menacing you know this Gandalf almost is like you see hope when you see Gandalf you know he's, he's super powerful he's gonna save the day I love just the imagery and the photography um, you know a lot of the lights with the dark background very Lord of the Rings um, the staff is great with the fingers just overall super detailed and um, I know Drew could <laughs> if he had more time he could fit in the face a little bit uh, but even still, major props were attempting this inside of a complex box plate model. Um, I like the structure you had in place to do the beard and the hair and everything. Um, so yeah, well done. And that, friends, was my highlights from the Origami Dan death battle that happened earlier this year. As you can see, there were some absolutely crazy designs. And it's just cool to see, you know, the, the winners as they kept progressing through the rounds what models they kept going and going and going. Um, so this was over a couple months, uh, which is just phenomenal to see the effort, the drive, the passion, and the consistency that a lot of these folders put into their designs. Um, so everyone who participated, even if you know uh, didn't make it through all the rounds, that's, it's still such an amazing job participating, designing something, getting your skills out there, working on something. It's It can be scary, you're, you're battling someone, you know? Um, having your origami art essentially in front of everyone to be judged intentionally that's a huge step and i really like that it pushes everyone to continue forward in their design they're not resting or you know oh, like i'm too scared they really put themselves out there and took on a challenge so round of applause to everyone everyone who participated i absolutely love this competition and i hope you guys are inspired to try to either join some competitions or start designing your own things or maybe just stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit and doing something a little different with origami so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed that episode of origami review uh it is a special one but yes like i said this is season two we're going to have some more episodes coming up that i think you guys will enjoy um and yeah just thank you so much for watching if you'd like feel free to join the origami by voice membership in the past couple months, I've added some more diagrams that if you become a diagram tester, unlock access to some of those where the only other way you can 
you know, get those is to buy them, which again, you can also buy them to support me. Um, but yeah, definitely check that out. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze. Now I'm